Statistics Lesson 8.2, Testing a Claim About a Proportion. Develop the ability to use sample data to conduct a formal hypothesis test of a claim about a population proportion. Here are the components that should be included in the hypothesis test. Statement of the null and alternative hypothesis expressed in symbolic form. Value of the test statistic. Selection of the sampling distribution to be used for the hypothesis test. Identification of a p-value and or critical values. Uh, statement of a conclusion rejecting the null hypothesis or failing to reject the null hypothesis. Statement of a final conclusion that uses simple and non-technical terms to address the original claim. Testing the claim about a population proportion, normal approximation method. Objective, conduct a formal hypothesis test of a claim about a population proportion P. Notation, N equals the sample size. P hat equals X divided by N, the sample proportion. P equals the population proportion. P is the value used in the statement of the null hypothesis and Q equals one minus P. Requirements. The sample observations are a simple random sample. The conditions for a binomial distribution are satisfied. There is a fixed number of trials. The trials are independent. Each category has two categories of success and failure. The probability of success remains the same in all trials. Test statistic. For, claiming, for testing a claim about a proportion, Z equals P hat minus P divided by the square root of P times Q divided by N. P values are automatically provided by technology. If not, use table A2. Critical values uh, use the standard normal distribution for critical values. When testing claims about proportions, the confidence interval method is not equivalent to the p-value and the critical value methods. So the confidence interval method could result in a different conclusion. Recommend, recommendation, use a confidence interval to estimate a population proportion, but use a p-value or critical value method for testing a claim about a proportion. Also, uh, also, you're going to need to, uh, you're going to have to check NP should be greater than or equal to 5, and NQ should be greater than or equal to 5. You need to make sure that says uh, both of these, both must be satisfied. And also, remember that the mean is N times P, and the standard deviation is the square root of N times P times Q. Example, the Pitney Bowes survey. Uh, the, a Pitney Bow survey in which 1,009 customers were asked if they are comfortable ha with having drones deliver their purchase, purchases, and 54% or 545 of them responded with no. Use these re results to test the claim that most co uh, consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. We interpret most to mean more than half or greater than 0 0.5. Okay, so let's let's see what we got here. N, N is 1,009. And remember, this is the same one we did uh, on, on 8.1. P hat is going to be 545 divided by 1,009. And that works out to... 0 0.54 P 
is going to be 0 0.5. So Q is going to be 0 0.5. Okay. All right, one, let's see, uh, we, the requirement check. First, the sample observations are, simple, are a simple random sample. Good. Uh, the conditions for a binomial distribution are satisfied. There's a fixed number of trials. It's 1,009. Each trial has two categories, either success or failure, yes or no. And each trial, well, let's see, the probability of success remains the same on all trials. And we got to check NP. NP is greater than or equal to five. So we're going to have 1,009 times 0 0.54. And that should be greater than or equal to uh, five. And then NQ is greater than or equal to five. And let's see, uh, that's 1,009 times 0. Point, uh, well, 1 minus 5.4, 1 minus, 1 minus 0. 0.54, and that's 0. 0.46, 0. 0.46 is greater than or equal to 5, and I, let's see, that's 545, which is definitely greater than 5, and, uh, well, let's see here times 1009, that's 464, 464 is greater than or equal to 5. All right, so all the requirements are met. So now we can start with our steps. Step one, the original claim is that most consumers are uncomfortable with deliveries and the claim can be expressed in symbolic form as P is greater than 0 0.5. Uh, the opposite of the original would be P is less than or equal to 0 0.5. And in step three, our null hypothesis and our alternate hypothesis. Our null hypothesis is going to be P equals 0 0.5. And our alternate hypothesis is going to be P is greater than 0 0.5. And if you remember, this was the original, original claim. All right, that was the original claim. Uh, step four, step four, uh, alpha, and that was selected to be 0 0.05. And then step five, we ID our test statistic, and that's going to be P hat. Okay. And since it is P hat, we will use Z equals P hat minus P over the square root of P times Q divided by N. That will be our, our uh, test statistics. And then six... Step six, uh, we got to calculate the test statistics. And that's so Z equals, and that's going to be 0 0.54 minus 0 0.50 divided by the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 divided by 1009. And if you remember last time we calculated, that was 2.55. So that's our test statistic. Now we got to check it. So let's go to our, our calculator here. And we go menu, 6, 7, and then 5. Menu 675, we have 0 0.5, uh, 545, 1009, and we said our alternate hypothesis was greater than, and here we go. 
So our p-value is 0 0.00538. So 7. 0 0.0054. And that is greater than 0 0.05. So we will reject, reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Uh, remember, you, and this is uh, uh, this is alpha uh, alpha equals zero point zero five, and this z. Well, let's see. Uh, this time our p value, and it's going to be over here somewhere. Uh, this line here is our alpha, and then the, this is going to be our p value. And that's 0 0.0054. And it's definitely in, in the rejection area. So what step eight? Step eight. Because we reject, since we rejected the null hypothesis, we support that the alternative hypothesis, uh, we support the alternative hypothesis P is greater than. 0 0.5 and we include we conclude there is sufficient evidence to support the claim that more than half of the customers customers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. All right, there we go. All right, that is the p-value method. That is the p-value method. The second method is the critical value method. Now, a lot of this that we did, we'll, we'll continue to use. Uh, let's see here. Let me, let me erase some of this stuff. Uh, uh, let me erase some of this. And I'm going to leave, uh, I actually, I should have left five there too. Uh, and that's going to be Z equals P hat minus P over the square root of P times Q over n uh, and there's six so the critical value method steps are the same one two three four five six here's where uh here is where it gets a little bit different uh well we had uh over here we had alpha was uh 0 0.05 okay so we one minus 0 0.05 is 0 0.95 so we go in here and we go menu uh, six five three and the area is zero point nine five and we got one point six four five. So we find that's going to be that's going to be like right in there and that z equals one point six four five. So our rejection area is going to be in here. All right. Now, this Z value, our test statistic is 2.55, which is going to be over here. Z equals 2.55. Okay. Again, it's in, in uh, the rejection area, so we're going to reject, reject the null hypothesis. All right. And then... 
Uh, we're going to write the same uh, same sentence we did before. Uh, we'll write the same sentence we did before. There is sufficient. There is sufficient evidence. Sufficient uh, sample evidence. Sample evidence to support the claim that more than half half of consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. All right. Now the third method is the confidence interval method. Okay, the confidence interval method. So what are we gonna do here? Well, uh, that's gonna be a little bit different. Let me clear this off. Got a nice clean sheet here. The confidence interval method uh, We're going to uh, to use alpha equals zero point zero five. We're going to do a ninety percent confidence interval. Okay, we're going to do a ninety percent confidence interval. So what we got to do is we'll go here to our calculator and we'll go menu six, six, five, number of successes, zero point, oh, I don't know why I did that. That's 545 and N is one zero zero nine. And we'll change this to 0 0.90. And what do we got? Okay, 0 0.5142. So we'll write this as 0 0.514 is less than P, which is less than 0 0.566. Okay, now remember uh, the P equals 0 0.5. Well, 0 0.5 is not in there. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the entire range is greater than 0 0.5. Okay. And so based on this, we are 95 or 90% 90 confident that the limits of 0 0.514 and 0 0.566 contain the true value of P. The sample data appeared to support the claim that uh, most consumers are uncomfortable with drone deliveries. All right, this time here, it's the same, but that's not always the case. So I'm going to write this out because we are 90% comfortable. We are 90% confident at the limits of 0 0.514 and 0 0.566 contain the true
value of P the sample data up here appear to support the claim that most consumers are not comfortable with drone deliveries. Okay, all right. Finding the number of successes. X, example, a study of sleepwalking or nocturnal wandering was described in Neurology Magazine. It, and it included information that 29.2% of 19,136 American adults have sleptwalked. What is the actual number of adults who have sleptwalked? Okay, usually they don't tell you what X is. They just tell you what uh, uh, the percentage is, what the P hat is. So here we go. We've got 0 0.292 times one nineteen thousand one hundred thirty six, and that's going to equal five thousand five hundred and eighty seven point seven one two. Now we can't have point seven two two adults, so we're going to say five thousand five hundred and eighty eight. Always round up in this case. Always round up. Using the same sleepwalking data, N equals 19,136 and P hat equals 29.2%, 29, 29 would you be justified in saying that fewer than 30 adults, 30% 30 of adults have sleptwalked? Let's use a 0 0.05 significance level to test the claim that for the adult population, the proportion of those who have sleptwalked is less than 30 percent is less than 0 0.30 0 0.30 requirement check simple random sample oh uh, let's see simple random sample Fixed number of trials, 19,136. Independent trials, uh, uh, two categories. Success, they slept, walked, failure, they didn't. Uh, requirement, NP is greater than or equal to five, and NQ is greater than or equal to five, are both satisfied. And let's see here. Uh, NP, 19,136 times... Uh, 0 0.292, I am sure that is greater than, but we'll check it, 19,136 times 0 0.292, definitely greater, 5587, all right, so that, that's met, and then, of course, the other one's going to be like 14,000, so both of those are satisfied. Uh, let's see. So those three requirements are met. So let's walk through the steps. One, uh, the, let's see, the original claim, let's see, what is it? Let's see, test the claim that for an adult, the population of those who have slept walked is less than 0 0.30. So P is less than 0 0.30. Two, the opposite would be P is greater than or equal to 0 0.30. All right. Step three. Uh, because, because this does not, P is less than 0 
0 0.30 does not uh, contain an equality, we're going to say the null hypothesis is P equals 0 0.30. So the alternate hypothesis will be P is less than 0 0.30. Now, my question is, left tail test, right tail test, or two tail test? All right, four, four, alpha, it said alpha was 0 0.05, okay? Because the claim involves the proportion, the statistic relevant to this will be, so let's see here, five, we're gonna have uh, P hat, and, and, and we're gonna use that one there, so we're gonna have Z equals P hat minus P over the square root of P times Q, and that's gonna be not, uh, N. All right, that's gonna be our, our thing. Okay. So p-value method, we've got this, all right, p-value, p-value, what do we got? Uh, let's go in here, and we've got p-value menu, six, seven, five, and that's going to be 0 0.30 successes. Uh, that we calculated that a little bit ago, and that was 55. Uh, uh, 52, what was it? 5588, 5588, and that was 19,136. And this time we said it was less than. So what did we get? We got. P value is 0 0.007968. So 0 0.00. We'll just do eight. Okay. And that is less than 0 0.05, right? So what do we have here? Uh, we will reject, reject the null hypothesis. Okay? Reject the null hypothesis. Critical value, critical value, value method. What do we got? Z equals, let's calculate that. Uh, we're going to have uh, control divide, and we have, let's see, control divide, 5588 over 1009. All right, and that's going to be minus, oh, that's going to be minus 0 0.3 over the square root, uh, control, divide, and we're going to have open parentheses 0 0.3, close parentheses times, open parentheses 0 0.7, close parentheses, and then uh, 19, 1, 9, 1, 3, 6, and then we'll hit enter. Whoa, let's see here. What did I do here? 50, oh, look at there, Let's, oh man, that's embarrassing. All right, I got a few too many eights there. Let's try that. 5580, why did I put 1009 down there? That was supposed to have been what? Oh, darn. Enter. All right, let me go up here and grab that. And we'll change this to uh, 19, 136. 
I'm still doing half the other problem. Press enter. Ah, negative 2.41. So Z equals negative 2.41. That just goes to show you, you need to write it down. That way you don't do that. 5588 over 19136 minus 0 0.30 over the square root 0 0.3 times 0 0.7 over 1919 19, 1936 and that equals negative uh, 2.41 so let's draw our thing here and we have we have uh, a p value or an alpha of 0 0.05. So we'll go menu, sick, menu, and then let's see here, uh, six, and then five, and then three, and we got 0 0.05, tab, and then negative 1.645. So we got something over here, negative 1.645. And this is this, this is over here somewhere, negative 2.41. It is in the rejection region. So again, we will reject the null hypothesis. Okay, now what about what about uh what about the Confidence interval method. Confidence. Let's go back. Uh, confidence interval. Confidence interval method. Okay. So we got to calculate a confidence interval for this. I don't, let's see. Menu. And then we got six. Uh, menu. Six and six and uh, five successes fifty five eighty eight tab one nine one three six confidence interval confidence level uh point nine point nine uh, well, we, point nine zero. Okay, and what do we got? We got the lower is two point. Let's see here. Uh, it is neg or zero point two eight six six. So we'll say zero point two eight seven is less than p is less than what was the other one? 0 0.292, 0 0.297. All right. And because the entire range of the confidence interval falls below 30%, there is uh, sufficient evidence to support the claim that fewer than 30% of adults have slept well. Okay, so again, we are rejecting the null hypothesis. Okay, and so our statement, our final statement there is sufficient evidence to support the claim. that fewer than 30% of adults have slept well. Huh. Did not know that. Cool. Exact method. 
exact methods for testing claims about a population proportion P. The exact method, left tail test, P value is equals P, X, or fewer successes among N trials. Right tail test, P value equals P, uh, the probability X or more successes among N trials. And the two tail test, P value equals twice the smaller of the preceding left tail and right tail values. While the exact method, with the exact method, the actual probability of a type one error is less than or equal to alpha, which is the desi desired probability of a type one error. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a method here for doing it, okay? Uh, but it is certainly not the only one. And uh, the, the uh, people who are really, really smart, uh, they can't really agree. You know, there, there's like several different views on how this should, should uh, be done. But we're going we're gonna to go with the author on this. All right. Example. In testing a method for gender selection... Ten randomly selected couples are treated with the method. They each have a baby, and nine of them are girls. Use a 0.05 significance level to test the claim that with this method, the probability of a baby being a girl is greater than 0 0.75. All right, first we got the requirement check. Requirement check. And let's see. One, it's a simple random sample, okay, and there's a fixed number of trials, uh, n equals 10, all right, independent trials, yes, each, you know, different couples, uh, success or failure, success is a girl, failure is a boy, I don't really like that statement, but anyway, number four, uh, same probability of success on each trial, and that is true, okay, 0.75. So uh, let's do requirements met, requirements met, there, oh, met, all right, number one, uh, the original statement, uh, the probability of a baby being a girl is greater than 0 0.75 with this gender selection treatment. Okay, uh, so we're going to say P is greater than 0 0.75, two, what it, uh, let's see, P is less than or equal to 0 0.75. So three, our null hypothesis is going to be P equals 0 0.75. And our alternate hypothesis is going to be P is greater than 0 0.75. Four. It said our alpha was uh, 0 0.05, and that's right there. Okay, five, let's see, step five, ID test statistic, uh, and that will be the binomial distribution. Binomial distribution, binomial distribution. And I'm not going to write out the formula because it is super complicated, and we're just we're just going to use, we'll use the, calc, the calculator for it. All right. Six. Uh, okay. Let's do it. We'll go in here, menu. Six, five. And <coughs> down here. Uh, ooh. Menu, six, five. And it's B. All right. The number of trials is 10. The probability of success is 0 0.75. The lower bound is 9. The upper bound is 10. And let's hit the old button there. So our p-value is 0 0.244. So let's see here. P-value is 0 0.244 and that happens to be greater than alpha okay that is, that's greater than alpha of 0 0.05 okay 
So seven, uh, well, we, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis, okay? And we will say eight, there is not sufficient evidence that with gender selection method the probability of a girl or of having a girl is greater than 0 0.75. All right. Good job, folks. I believe that's all for the evening. Y'all have a wonderful evening, and I will see you in class tomorrow.